Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again with yet another deck tech from MTG Aftermath. Again, getting through the last few I need to do. This is the penultimate one. We have one more coming out tomorrow. And then if things work out properly, there'll be an update on something on Friday. But this is another one of the Aftermath cards I wanted to get done before Lord of the Rings hits MTGO. And it is, obviously, Kiora, Sovereign of the Deep. Three green and blue for a 4-5. Legendary creature... I think it's Merfolk Nomad, I can't quite see on here. Um, with Vigilance and Ward 3. But the best bit is whenever you cast a Kraken, Lithiathan, Octopus or Serpent spell from your hand, look at the top X cards of your library or X as a mana spell's mana value and cast a spell from with mana value X or less from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah, okay then. So this is basically a blue-green, oh, well, Creatures of the Deep beatdown deck. I like beat down decks. I've got into them recently. So, hey, if you don't like it, really sorry. Let me know why you don't like it in the comments and I'll respond. So, the deck itself. Um, Blue-green lands all the way through. Quite a lot of snow-covered lands. I went with snow-covered basics and there is a reason for that and we'll get to it. Um, Temple of the False Gods here. We've got Reliquary Tower here. But nothing really too OTT. The OTT stuff does come with the artifacts, unfortunately, that I'm using for ramp. So, Tantalite, Soul Talisman, Everflowing Chalice aren't too bad to pick up. Mana Crypt, yep, that's expensive. Soul Ring's okay. Arcane Signet's okay. That's where we went. Didn't go too heavy on it, but we went with these. So, what do we want to do? Well, you know, our Merfolk Noble, there you go, it's Noble, not Nomad, is really here to get those creatures into play. And we want to be hitting this into play, followed by Serpents and Octopi and Krakens and Lathiathans as soon as possible. So, let's go through it. The quest for the Ulla's Temples here. Um, if it's a creature card, reveal it, put a quest counter on the temple. And at the beginning of each end step, if there are three or more quest counters on the temple, you may put a Kraken, Lathiathan, Octopus or Serpent creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. At the beginning of each end step. Now this one's an interesting one for the quests. Because usually you have to sacrifice them as part of the ability. You don't with this one. It just sticks around forever. So you're going to get a free octopus or something at the beginning of each end step. Bear it in mind. Birds of Paradise, Elvish Mystic, Fire Nord Elves, Lanoir Elves. Just help us ramp quicker. Counter Spell Mana Drain to hit those annoying day Days of Judgments, Wrath of Gods. Um, whatever else we've got now. Can't remember extra turn spells, so on and so forth. Inscription of Abundance lets us go and do some fighting with our um, creatures if we need to, and hopefully we'll be able to kick it so we can get gain the X life and then one of our creatures fights something else. Three Visits helps us ramp and goes and fetches out some of the more um, obscure lands, you know, um, like Breeding Pool. That's basically what it's here for, otherwise you'll get a snow-covered forest. Coiling Oracle, we all know what it does. Top card of our library, it's the land into the battlefield, otherwise into our hand. And Curious Follower helps us untap some of the permanents, you know. Untapping these isn't the worst thing in the world to do. Arcane Adaptation turns everything we want into a creature we want. I usually pick Kraken because it's quite funny having it saying Elvish, Elf Druid Kraken. Just for us to be, but pick whatever you want, but make sure you do pick. Um, one of the types of the things that Kiora really worries about, yeah. Kraken, I like Leviathan, Elvish Leviathan, anybody? Anyway, um, the Deer Kraken is the first one of the Krakens to appear. Where we draw a card, we do want to pay the one to put the plus one, plus one counter on and get a tentacle token creature, so that's quite nice. Azusa, Lost But Seeking, lets us drop all the lands into play as things go along quicker. The Dryad makes sure that we've got all the blue-green blue lands we ever want and gives an extra land drop. Hydromancer from Dominaria United. Um, we want to get this kicked. Enters the battlefield if it was kicked. Create a token that's a copy of a target creature you control. Copy one of your non-legendary big legends of the deep. Well, big non-legendaries of the deep, I should say. Um, you know, I'm thinking things like um, the Kraken of the Straits or the Scourge of the Fleets or the Scrap Diver Serpent, if it's got to be the worst thing you do. Realm Walker Lexus, uh, is a crack in itself, so that's quite nice. So, you know, does trigger this because um, it's a shape changeling. And you can look at the top card of our library and you may cast creature spells from the chosen type from the top of your library. Um, works really nicely with arcane adaptation, namely everything is Kraken. 
Rights of flourishing, extra card draw, extra land drop. Search for tomorrow, just another way of getting land out along with wood elves. Cura lets us untap things that we need to untap. And this has been turning up a lot recently in the mono green pioneer decks, which reminded me about it. So yeah. Yep, that's here for this one. And Edric, get some card draw. Thank you very much. Um well, card draw for everyone. So you do get left alone of Edric's in play, but that in mind. Herald Horn makes our Krakens cast cheaper, and Urza's Incubator makes them even cheaper. Shakasima with a thousand faces is quite nice because it does let us make a copy of a legendary Kraken. Clever Imposter lets us copy a Kraken. Reservoir Kraken is one of the ones we might want to be copying from the streets of New Capenna. Um, beginning of uncombat, if it is untapped, any opponent may tap and untap their creature they control. If they do, tap Kraken, Reservoir Kraken, and get a 1 1 fish token that can't be blocked. I've seen people die to fish. Not pleasant, but it does happen. Oracle of Muldyre lets us play the lands off the top of our library as well as an extra land drop each turn. Vastwood Surge is just a way of getting some lands out of our library into play, but then kicking it is really nice to get all the make all our creatures even bigger. Chameleon Colossus, because why not? It's another Kraken at the end of the day, or whatever creature type we picked. We had to have one version of Cure in here in Planeswalker form, and I went with the Master of the Depths and the Crashing Wave, so they're both here. Um, untapping a creature and up to one lands nice. Drawing a card if we need to is nice or preventing the damage, so hence why they both made it in. Body Double lets us copy anything in the graveyard. Uh, reflections of Leteri. Ooh. Sorry, slight yawning. Um, let's just make sure that we can get copies of our Kraken as we play them. Sco Shoal of Kraken is also in as well. And it's Constellation. Whenever an enchantment is about to be under your control, you may draw a card if you do discard it. Not many of them, but I want another cheap drop Kraken. Hence why it's here. Seedborn Muse. Untap everything. Here we go again. And this is the reason we have the Snowlands in here. Is Moriarty of the Frost. Just so we can... Um, come in with the extra plus one plus one counters on it and make it a little bit more fun to cast um god hunter octopus i've already mentioned can't attack unless defending player controls an enchantment or an enchanted permanent but a five five block of a six i can cope with spawning kraken whatever a kraken leviathan octopus or serpent you control deals combat damage get another kraken into play this is one of the more expensive cards i have in this mtgo deck i can't remember exactly what it's sitting at at the moment but yeah, I really do recommend picking one up if you can find one at your local friendly gaming store if you want one in paper. It's amazing. The Prodigy's here just for the um, Cascade trigger, which is fine. And it copies something that's come into play. I have done this where I've gone, I've had 12 mana, I have had Spawning Kraken in play, and then I've done this on the Flash and had two copies of Spawning Kraken, and oh dear, that gets nasty very quickly then. And the Cascade, I think, went into Seedborn Muse, if I remember. Did I mention Rite of Replication? I don't think I did. Just realised I've missed that. That's a lovely target for our spawning Kraken. Anyway. Serpent of the Yawning Deaths. Can't, Krakens, Lothizons, Octopuses and Serpents you control can't be blocked. Apart from their namesakes. So, yep. Shipbreaker Kraken. We want to go monstrous as soon as we can to tap the four creatures down to you know, win the game. And Progenitor Mimic. I haven't played this one for a while, but copying something like you know, Spawning Kraken makes life very interesting and very dangerous. Anyway, Kraken of the Straits. Creatures with power less than the number of islands you control can't block a Kraken of the Straits. So that's quite nice. Um, Scourge of the Fleets returns each creature your opponents control with toughness X or less to its owner's hand where X is the number of islands you control. I mean, we've got what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 islands in the deck, so you know, most things are going to get bounced. Well, 11 if you count Breeding Pool and some of the other lands I've put in. Rhinewood Falls, 12. Um, we got Untangled Islands. We got 13 islands in place. So we should be bouncing most of it. So, yeah, all good fun. Scrap Diver, meh. Can't be blocked as long as the Defender controls an artifact. So, that, yeah, everyone plays Sol Ring and Arcane Signet and other artifacts. So, you probably can get through a five on someone. Trench Behemoth 
You turn the land you control to its owner's hand, untap this, it gains hex proof. That's nice. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, target creature an opponent controls attacks during its controller's next combat phase if able. So yeah, bit of luring going on. Um Trauma Cultatus, sorry if you just heard a car horn go off. People outside are having an argument. Um hex proof unless it's attacking or blocking, it can't be blocked unless all creatures defending player controls block it. So yeah. It does punch through quite happily for us. Tooth and Nail, because we are got a lot of ramp stuff going on, and it makes sense to have this in play. Don't cast it until you can entwine it for nine mana, please. And Coma, Cosmos Serpent. Yep, I had to have this in here, didn't we? <sighs> Brennanine, the Moon Kraken. It comes back from the Commander Legend set. Um, enters the battlefield or whenever you cast a spell with mana six or greater, you may return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, so you get to bounce things, which is lovely. Cylind of, of the Deep Arising enters the battlefield of its kick, return everything, return all creatures of their owners' hands except for Merfolk and all the other stuff that we've probably picked by then. Lothrus the Tide Maker attacks, we can pay 8 mana, tap 8 permanents, they don't untap. It does make people upset quite quickly. Verizol could come out, I'm going to be honest about this. I was going to play more with Kicker in it. I've only put a few in, but you know, you can sneak all your mana into it and get a lovely big serpent if you want to, hence why it's still in the deck. Deep Sea Cracker is suspendable, it can't be blocked, and then whenever an opponent casts a spell, it, if it's suspended, you remove a time counter from it, suspend it as quick as you can, because it's got suspend of nine, but whenever people and people will be casting spells quite quickly with their decks, so yeah, I've actually suspended it on turn one using this at a island and yeah people got upset with me i did become a target but you know it's only a six six at the end of the day that can't be blocked it can be removed by everything and finally icebreaker kraken is the main reason the snowlands are in here this spell costs one less to cast for each snowland you control when it enters the battlefield artifacts and creatures target opponent controls don't untap during that player's next untap step and then you can return three Snowlands we control to our hand and return Icebreaker Kraken to its owner's hand. Yeah, bit of a repetitive lockdown if you're really lucky and hope you know hopefully you will be. But that's it. That is my little take on Kiora's Sovereign of the Deep. I hope you've enjoyed it. This, like I say, this is the penultimate Aftermath Commander I'm going to be cast um, going through for a little while. Tomorrow's video is just the last bit of fun of something I wanted to do. Um, let me know what you thought in the comments. Let me leave, you know, hopefully you have subscribed and you've enjoyed this video. And, yeah, come and follow me on Twitch. There's a link down below to my Twitch channel. So, yeah, come and sit over there. Come and watch me play some of these decks you've watched me talk about this week. But thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll meet you very soon on Twitch, or you'll be back and leave me comments tomorrow. Take care. Bye.